So we are going to work today uh, on this set of, of demos on finishing our animation based on our storyboard sketch, seeing what we get based on our animation. Once we're happy with our animation, we will output that as a GIF file, which is only 256 colors, and we'll embed the timing we have for each frame. Once we have that animation, we can flatten those frames into their own layers, which is like film strip, you know, the animation. And what I think of it is as a is as a deck of playing cards, you know, like a flip book that we've made. Then you can use that flip book, that deck of playing cards with all of our images, and choose the best storytelling frames from it to make a refined storyboard. So we need to finish the animation before we can do the refined storyboard. And it the refined storyboard might look pretty different than our sketch, right? Depending on what choices we made and the timing of our story and everything. But they're, both of those components are acting to tell a story. You know, use setting, use character, use the illusion of time passing, and hopefully showcase some sort of transformation. All right, so this is as far as I got. I'm at a default timing of 0.3. And I'm having like the tongues come out, and all of that's working so far. But before I go too much further, I only have the stage file open, and this is what's called animating on the stage now. I'm not building any new assets. But what I can do is start to refine it a little bit. So I have my bug moving. I like how that works. But then once the tongue starts flicking out, it's, it feels like everything slows down a little bit, even though everything's at the exact same frame rate. So what's unique about digital is I can change these individual frames. So I'm going to take this whole bunch here, from 13 to frame 20, and I'm going to change their timing to 0.2 seconds. And then I can play it through and see what I what I think. Yeah, that helps a lot. Now, I don't know if I want this guy getting up too fast. But I do like what it does for, for the eating of the, uh, the bug. In fact, I might even speed it up a little bit more right here. And I might change this to 0.1 second, or if I want to be really, really subtle, I could do 0.15, right? But I don't recommend you ever make a frame faster than 0.1 because you won't be able to see it in real time as you're working on it because Photoshop will, just for processing, not be able to process it that fast. All right, so I'm going to try 0.15 here. So this is really customized timing because you need it really fast when he's just grabbing the bug, but then it can slow down as it goes into his mouth a little bit. And then this one, I'm going to go back, slow it down a little bit to 0.25. And this one, I'll go back to 0.3. These two, I'll go back to 0.3. So timing matters, right? Especially when you're kind of building up to a moment. Now this might be fast again. I think this is going to be 0.2 again. The tongue flicking out, especially because I don't really like how the tongue looks that much. But this is not about perfect frames. This is about it working in movement on a screen. So that's why the animation test part is so important. Okay, so this is where I left off. All is looking good, except notice that the atmosphere doesn't change at all. So I'm still programming this frame, and I have to change up my atmosphere just so it keeps going. Kind of skipping every other one and adjusting the opacity a little bit. And then I am continuing to turn these on, <laughs> these blue overlays. So the blue haze is building, building, building all throughout. And then it kind of speeds up. It gets more exciting, okay? So now I make a new frame, add the last of the cycle of blue, and then I'll start receding it after this but I'll probably recede it faster than it rolled in. So I might skip two as I go back. 
because now I'm starting from this point of my storyboard where character Z eats character Y. And now I can slow it down a bit because I have to get it all set to, to reset to the beginning. So I need to bring the character into his mouth first, obviously. So I'm going to play with atmosphere. And I'm just talking through what I'm doing, but it's all very repetitive. Animation is. That's why, personally, it's not my favorite of the digital art creative field. I love the output of it, but I don't like the, the monotony of repetition. But it's a great way to learn a new skill. Hmm. There we go. I just want a subtle change, okay? Don't need the bug movement anymore. Uh, his jaw, what's going to happen with his jaw? Let's see. Just moves a little bit, and then the eye, let's go for this. Well, we've used that before, let's do this. Okay, and then let's see what we're doing with the tongue. Oh, I see, yeah, we have a different, he's being lifted up now, so all of this actually is immaterial. And he looks nice and surprised. This is the problem with taking breaks between when you animate. <laughs> I have to turn him off. Let's see. There we go. Yep, so he just looks like that. Now I can change this. I can change the pixels within this one asset because this is the only time this one is on. And I can just do a little massaging if something bugs me. And this kind of bugs me, right? Just this kind of clumsiness. So I'm going to use my clone stamp right within the layer. At a pretty high opacity with a fairly sharp edge. And I just don't want it to look like like the tongue is uh, not wrapping around him. So there we go. And then I can dodge and burn. We can use all these compositing skills we've used before. I'm actually going to burn the inside of that tongue a little bit. I'll soften the brush. So it goes from this to this. And what's great is now that I'm animating on the stage, I can adjust and I can burn the tongue on this frame as well and kind of help it wrap around him a little bit more believably. Just knowing that anytime I actually change the pixels on a layer, it's changing them in all frames where that layer appears. Okay, so far so good. I can even, because that's true, I can even burn other aspects of it, of the creature. 
like his legs underneath him. Okay, that's point two, point two. Now we're gonna do a new frame. And I'm gonna start from the bottom here. Do those same things, maybe burn that tongue a little bit. I've kind of picked the intervention I think will work. I might even burn the shadows a little bit here, because at this point, I think people will be able to understand what they're looking at. If that's a little too strong, take it down slower. And now you can see his feet more clearly. Now they're catching the light. And even though I'm not animating his eyes or his mouth, I can burn them or dodge them slightly differently. And I could always puppet warp as well. So that's kind of fun. So he looks like a like he's in a slightly different pose already. Okay. Let's see. Now I need to do the atmosphere. So all of these folders that are turned off, I can collapse. And now I'm going to start going backwards with the blue. And I'm going to skip it by two. It's going to recede faster than it rolled in. Okay, next frame. Oh, let's change a little bit more of the atmosphere than the frame before. Let's see. You don't notice these tiny changes in coloring and atmosphere and texture fills while it's a still image. You won't notice that in your refined storyboard, but you definitely notice it as you're, you're moving frame to frame. All right, that's working out. <laughs> That's one of my favorite frames. I think that will be in my refined storyboard, just his expression there. All right. So now, we go to the next one. Work from the bottom. Almost through this whole cycle. And my thinking was that it could just go that fast. But the problem is, I feel like, um, let's see, let's test it. Yeah, that, that pretty much works. but I think I might need to uh, show the creature in the background's mouth close. And I don't have that asset built. So this is a, an issue. And this happens in productions all the time, right? Oh, we just need this last little bit, this last little part on the puppet. We need to show his mouth closed at this moment. We don't have that asset, but we've already shot all of these different frames. So how can I add an asset? Well, it's problematic, but let me show you how it works. So right now I have 25 frames outputted. So any new layer I create will get added to every frame. So I'm gonna tell you how we can do that, but then I can delete it from every frame, except for the ones I need. So this is what's tricky about it. I need to find that asset, and I'm gonna steal it from my um, other character because I already made his jaw group, right? So I'm going to find the asset I want, and I think it's going to be this one, right? 
And what I'm going to do is duplicate that 